I am absolutely thrilled to be presenting this, our second exhibition, solo exhibition, of works by Co Kirk Yamakira. Uh, Kirk was born in Los Angeles and raised in Tokyo and London. And now he's living in, uh, the Seattle, in Seattle, having moved here to the Pacific Northwest from New York about four years ago. He is a self-taught artist and has been exhibiting his work since about 2012 in the US, Canada, and Japan, both individually and as a member of the artist collectives Art Beasties and Soil. In 2018 alone, Kirk was honored with a solo exhibition at the Fry Museum of Art in Seattle, and his work was also included in exhibitions at the Bellevue Art Museum, Bridge Productions in Seattle, and at the Tokyo Metropolitan Museum of Art. And just this past summer, the Fry Museum of Art acquired a piece of Kirk's for their permanent collection. I'm so proud to represent him, pleased to have him make the trip down here this morning, so please welcome co-Kirk Yamahira. Hello. Um, happy New Year, everyone. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I was kind of thinking, how many times do I need to do this? I like to get used to it. And I'm still very nervous now. So, maybe starting from this year, I was just going to count <laughs> numbers. So, um, well, there's nothing in here. Um, <laughs> yeah, just to take you notes. Know. Okay. So um, first, um, I would like to introduce about myself a little bit by um, using this sketchbook that I'm using. So um, when I focus something, I first see the front like this, so you can see the pink square. But um, and I think um, by holding my fingers, you can feel the depth of the, the notebook, so um, maybe people, f I mean, we figure out that it's not a paper or kind of like a plate, it's something thicker. And then, um, I mean, there's like up and down, and left and right, and front and back. So we have like six, minimum, uh, six like numbers that we can focus things. And then, if this is a notebook, you can open up and read. Well, there's nothing here, but um, if it's written in Japanese or English, then you have another thing that you can focus the object. Um, but also, I'm thinking kind of like um, a mystery is, is a very important spice for me. Um, it's it's good to leave as a mystery. So yeah, let's say like this is a square, and when you put a little angle, you can see it's a cube. But if you see from the the top and make a little angle, then you can see a hexagon shape. So it's really like. From one object, you have a lot of like things inside that you can focus and describe. But as I said, the mystery is I'm thinking like once you like understand, understanding something, I think it means that you're in the door, you're in the door in front, and it says you're not understanding. So you're kind of like getting to the loop of understand and not understanding, and it's like never end. Mm -hmm. So if you leave as a mystery, then the distance never change. So I think I'm keeping that for now with my painting. Um, all right, so um, when I describe my artwork, um, as you see, um, yeah, this one is both. So, um, unweaving process is my unweaving is it's a process. It's kind of like um, opposite process of like knitting. Because mm -hmm. I'm using a three uh, cotton canvas first and paint it on color or silk screen, and then 
I snatched a little part of the soft part or like in the deciding point with the exacto knife. And after that, um, and I'm weaving thread by thread by hand. So I never um, like calibrated how much time that I used for making one painting. That was kind of like a common question that people like, ask me, like how much time you take. But I try not to, like a mystery. I try not to describe how much time that I use. Because so this is the number of the thread, multiple, maybe like three minutes. So that's the brief time that I take it. Um, I think I'm weaving is, is like what we do in daily life. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm weaving, I mean like deconstructing and deconstructing. Um, the easy example like cooking. Um, we are uh, deconstructing the ingredients first and make a meal by deconstructing. And plus, again, deconstructing to consist our body. So that's how we uh, do it in our daily life. And I thought, why not do it with my artwork? That was kind of like um, uh, a concept also that I thought. And also, um, I wanted to um, describe more like a possibility of me and the third person, it could be like the owner of the painter, the painting. Um, so this is one of the example of the way of showing. You could also like put these two panels together or expand more, like became like a straight <laughs> shape. Um, so most of my painting is like that. Um, I'm leaving kind of like a play for the third person that they could, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> play for their rest of the life. <clears throat> and, um, okay, so at last, and I finish. <laughs> All right, so. Um, there may be some questions I want to ask. Okay, so before the question, I just wanted to show you a little like um, performance. Even. Um, so um, this is also some kind of like the play that I kind of wish in a possibility in the future that the painting follow the painter. Um, I'll just kind of show you with this. So please do the painting after I go up like that. <laughs> So, that's it. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>
Um, I've got more than like 15 shapes at least. And once I'm in the venue, um, I kind of like working with the uh, preparator and art handlers because they know this space better than I am. So, um, so for this time, Eric and Sonny tell me a lot. And <laughs> yeah, we just like figure out how, what is the best way to show it at this place, yes. Yes. Um, I'm not familiar with your past work, but um, oh, thank you. I suppose what really interests me about these um, pieces is they they are paintings in one way, but uh, you also um, refer to them as drawings and textile pieces, sculpture. I mean, is it important to you? That, um, like, how do you how do you do you classify these? Um, you know, is is the sculpture something? Are you aiming for a sculptured? Piece by the end. Mm -hmm. I'd love to kind of understand you know, that definition of what mm -hmm. work is in some way for like their extreme bodies of painting, the canvas, the, mm -hmm. the three, um, just really pushing boundaries of that. So I'm just really excited right. about um, the classification of the work. I think before I do, I think people will classify or like categorize. This, this is like painting or this is like sculpture. And so I'm thinking if the, um, like the gallery owner asked me, what is the style? I'm gonna give the answer, but I'm kind of leaving that for the third person. They could just like see and feel how my painting is, yeah. Um, so, if you know my past work, um, I actually um, try to, like this piece, um, unweave from one direction. So, this one is, is only the horizontal thread, uh, horizontal thread, thread is here, and I took all the vertical thread out. But, um, starting from this show, uh, there's one upstairs over there and one here, but those two pieces are um, and we from both direction actually. So from this side is the vertical fit as that piece, but this one is the horizontal fit is out, and only this tiny half inch canvas is holding the two together. Yeah. So um, the title of fraction that I put for this show is is something like that. Um, well, the piece is upstairs, so it's kind of hard to explain, but um, there's like three panel, and one is like this one? Yeah. Horizontal, plain canvas, and a vertical thread. And actually, all three panel is, is started to shape as 26 by 46 and a half inch. But you can see that this side, um, I think it's a little bit wider, like 29 inch. And this side is a little bit like taller, like 47 and a half something. And I see that's kind of like a fraction of the canvas. So that's the reason why I put this title. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, if you look really closely at some, you can see the tangles in the starting form. And I was curious if that was something you saw as desirable or natural thing over time that would change them, or if you try to prevent that while you're making them? Mm -hmm. So I try, I mean, yeah, maybe like these part, right? Um, so it's really affected to the humidity, and we are getting snow, so I think, um, that's the reason it's, it's the thread has stopped tangling. So uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit close to the hair. Yeah. So when you calm, it, it's really like it's smooth. And when you, when you, you can calm for a while, I think it's getting more like, like these kind of like shapes. Yeah. Can you talk a bit about this piece, which is the Oh, um, so, 
that piece over there, um, it is actually the latest piece in this show. Everything is from 1979, late 1979. Hmm? 2079, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so last year. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, my brain is like overwhelmed. So um, this one is, is yeah, this is the only one piece which is which doesn't have the unweaving part. And I was purely focused the possibility of the canvas. So um, I wanted to put the shadow itself into my piece. And when I figure, I, yeah, so we can see the shadow, but it's really bold and just like underneath. But once the object is like off the wall, you know, you can see like foreshadow with a gradation. And this actually means this piece is a little bit like off the wall and it's like three and a half dimension. So that was kind of the idea that I made that piece. <laughs> yes. The shadow on this, mm -hmm. I think, is really interesting because when I first looked at the piece from the front, I thought that that dark area on the left was on the wall, mm -hmm. like a drawing on the wall, and then I realized it was on the fiber, it was on the. So, were you playing with that sort of illusion? Um. Yes. Um. So, um, did you know that this is a, a girl with a long hair trying to sit on the sofa? <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. I, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> and the image is reversing. I mean, I just like copy the same image on the side. Um, so, yeah. Um, the other thing is, I think it's the depth and and the wooden frame, which is we don't used to see this usually. I mean, it's always hiding with the canvas. But I just wanted to show this part and the shadow that we leave here and express the uh, the dimension. Yeah, that was the idea. And when you see closer to the thread. Um, not even this one. So actually the, the color is not just like gray, it's like black, white, black, white. That's make the gray mm -hmm. all together. And that because of the thread is going like underneath each other. So once one thread is out, yeah, you see uh, the back of the, the canvas, which is like no color. So that's the reason why it's like black and white. Mm -hmm. And that's also, I'm trying to make kind of like that. So in this one, before mm -hmm. you started unweaving it, mm -hmm. did all the surfaces look like the two end panels? Yes. Okay. So it was a very long rectangular canvas, and I painted it on black, and I just need the two edges. I, I'm very excited uh, to hear you talk about your work and to see how you are playing with the surface itself, and we just came from the lecture with Audrey and her talking about the constructing and deconstructing concept, and I myself use that in my own work. Um, so it's very exciting for me to see, it's almost like you're um, removing part of the structure of the formal essence of the painting and leaving us with this beautiful linear support system that none of us would ever conceptualize as being a canvas. Um, so that's brilliant to me as a painter. And then from where I'm sitting, seeing the shadow on the wall of, as you now are informing us, it's a woman sitting on a couch with long hair. Um, to see the, the beauty in the secondary surface, i.e. The, the gallery. So there's a relationship that I feel like you're um, exploring in a very unique way, and it's, it's very exciting, Kirk, so thank you. Thank you, too. Yes. I can see on this one, for example, the edges of the canvas. Mm -hmm. Is there a special kind 
of cans you like, or is the whole gamut of um, available canvases okay for you? It's just like a regular column canvas that I'm using. Yeah. Treated with some gesso or any material, or just plain raw canvas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, unprimed, of course. Yeah, right. if it's like prime, I can like unweave. Yes. So, yeah. Thank you. More questions? Thank you so much for coming in.